asked us to do this, we're really excited. It was really gives us an opportunity to kind of one-on-one -on -one conversations with you guys about what is our sweet spot? What is Earthlink doing in the marketplace to make a difference? And so, you know, it's a short period of time, but we, we really wanted to share with you some of our successes and some of the things that we're doing and winning out there in the marketplace. So a couple of things, um, I'm not sure how familiar you are with Earthlink or not. I think everybody's a little familiar with some of our legacy companies that we purchased. You know, part of what we've done is we've grown up over the last couple of years and we've acquired several different companies. We've really put them together and we've really launched what we feel like is a really strong product portfolio vertically focused and meaningful to our customers. So if you're familiar with New Edge Networks, they played a really important part in that retail space with things like, we call it blended access. So for customers that don't necessarily need the same access type across the country, we can make sure that we offer them something that is, is relevant to each location. So whether it's a T1 or Ethernet or DSL, we can do an MPLS network over all of those different access types. So the next evolution for us is, Aside from network voice, hosted voice, where can we move and evolve into a space that is important to those type of customers? So we had an advisory board on the retail space and said, what's important to you? What's coming up and what are the things that are keeping you up at night? And some of those things that they said is, I really need to protect my brand. So things that are important to me is to make sure that I'm not in the news like Target or Lowe's or Home Depot and make sure that there's things like PCI compliance or people doing things on my network. So we evolved into things like we have guest Wi-Fi that is a secure Wi-Fi solution that our customers can offer to their customers. So it's, a, it's about them being able to connect to their customers in a private, secure manner that it's not running some risks of, of brand risk. So um, the guest Wi-Fi services that we offer is called Secure Wi-Fi. It not only allows them to give their customers ability to connect to the Wi-Fi, it gives them analytics based on that customer. So marketing loves it. It's things like, who came into my store? Who walked by my store that didn't come into the store? How long were they there? Where did they go? What did they do? And so it's just that next evolution of getting something back for what they're offering to their customers. They can merchandise based on where people congregate and they can look at you know, pushing offers out to their clientele. So that was one thing that was um, kind of launched. We call this whole product Secure Storefront. That's one of the products in our secure product, uh, secure storefront portfolio. Another one is PCI compliance. So anybody that's striping credit cards is concerned about PCI. There's a new 3.0 compliance that came out earlier this year that they're all saying, I need to figure out what I'm going to do to become compliant to this. And so we'll offer the ability to have that customer not only make sure that their network is PCI compliant, but their processes, their procedures, their employees, there's a lot that goes into it. So we offer that to our customers as well. And then um, other things that we can offer, cloud-based products is based on their needs, network, hosted voice, all of those kind of traditional things that a lot of carriers offer. But it gives us different conversations with our existing customers and they can be sold standalone. So they don't have to be in conjunction with, I have to sell you the network with this. If you've got an existing customer that already has a network with you today, we can layer those things on top of it. So it's an embedded based strategy that you can go out and say, let's talk about some other things. I'm already doing your network. Let's talk about some other things that might be important to you. Storefront and, and Wi-Fi. If I've got, say, a level three MPLS network, how, how would you do that? Okay, we would work with the with the customer in dividing up their network okay. and just giving them a device that's on a an open side of the network. Gotcha. And so then on the on the VLANs. authenticated side of the network, okay. the secured side, they could have secure so Wi-Fi on the on the secure side of the network. So basically, they they bring in two VLANs into into an access device to uh, uh, support it. And, and some of the things you get with the open side is you get a splash page. So a person logging on, when they go onto the internet, the first thing they're gonna see is the customer's um, custom splash page, and that might have a coupon on it, and that might generate some more revenue right there. And it's beyond IT, so you come out of the commodity sale. You know, or, you don't, you, they're in contract. Well, you got something to sell them, they're in contract. When that contract's expired on the MPLS network, you have something to offer them. Are you also supplying the access points and the wi the physical Wi Fi? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, are we managing that Wi Fi? Yes. So actually, the they, they get their portal. 
They get a portal, they have full control over that device, and they also get information like on the secure side. They'll, the, the easiest way to break into somebody's Wi-Fi network is to create a rogue access point. So it's putting a rogue access point onto an access point. And now you use that act, that rogue access point as your point of entry into the network. This thing, the, the, this access point that we supply actually identifies rogue access points. I think a success story in Connecticut actually, what started off as just a, I need 20 meg of internet, um, which is great, but then it's like, what more is this about? They're a retailer or actually a restaurateur. They wanted to be able to give some Wi-Fi to their guests. We had a more conversation with that. Six weeks later, we're not only installing the internet service, but they get a firewall from us because they want to have security on their network. We have some PoE switches because they're running some VoIP on that internet connection. And we have a bunch of, uh, I think, five or six in this rather large restaurant where they're able to go on to hotspots, Wi-Fi hotspots they can go on to. As an owner, they can actually go onto a portal there and see who's connecting, um, anything from you know how long they're on there for, uh, what kind of analytics are they doing, for instance, are they going on to social media? So now for their marketing people are now excited about this because they can then create a strategy and then say, you know what, when people come to our restaurant, 60% of the time they're going to Facebook. So now we want to go ahead and let's let's put our marketing dollars towards a Facebook ad. Or you know what, like us on Facebook, we'll push out a coupon or something to that extent. And we give them the power to go onto a website to do that. And that's one of our, you know, one of our partners that makes that happen. So that's a, a good story. And you know, six weeks later, what was going to be an easy 20 meg DIA turns into a much larger sale, the agent, but also the customer, they're the loving this stuff. You know, and that was when I just went through in the, this year. So it's it's out there and it's good when people see that. The next step, obviously, is PCI 3.0 compliance. Because if they're running credit card transactions, you have to be PCI 3.0 compliant this year. It's a requirement the credit card uh, companies make you do. We can help administer that type of compliance for those retailers. The banks aren't going to protect them. So what we do is we allow them to go on and, and check that off of their QSR, off of their, off of their quality control. So that's what we do. It's a good stuff.